Hi guys. Hi, I'm Shan. I'm Bert. We're going to do our um, possibilities for novellas in November, nope, otherwise nope, known nope. as <laughs> Nov I saw the hashtag, I think Laura had hashtagged it Nov Nov, yeah. and I really like that. Yeah. Although it could just mean novels in November as well, isn't it? But the main reason why you're doing it. Yeah, because I could just do hashtag Nov Nov. Yeah. Um, I'm not much of a novella reader, I don't think. No, I... I'm not consciously reading novellas, but I think a lot of my books are just really short. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so again, watching um, Sarah from Hardcover Hearts doing this was like, that's a really good idea because yeah. then I can slip them in in between. The yeah, so you're books. more into this than I am. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, Heather was, has been reading a lot of uh, novellas. Yeah, she, she loves she? novellas. Laura always does like no um, novellas in November every year as yeah. well. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So these ones, actually, most of the ones I picked are your books. Because yeah. it turned out I didn't really have that many. Yeah, and I probably might end up sort of swapping and changing a lot of my books through the month okay. anyway. Oh, but I do have the new Mary Gates Girl coming. Yes, that should be Which here. I forgot what it's called. In like the middle of November, I think. I think it was kind of early November, was wasn't it? it? And it's, uh, yeah, so it's her new, and it's a new one, it's a novella. Yeah, and it's like officially a novella, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and I love her. Yeah. So, I mean, novella, I went with less than 200 pages. Yeah, all of these so, are as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You got more than me, so should I start? First, yeah. So um, I might start with the ones that are actually. Oh no, there's a few. There's like half and half that are mine and half are yours. Okay. So I'm going to start with this one, which is a really lovely little book which my friend Grace gave me, and this is A Certain Smile by Francois Sagan, and it's um, it's followed Bonjour Tristesse, which I don't think I've read. So is it not like a sequel? Is it? No, no. I don't think so. It just yeah. it just came out afterwards, but it's a about um, a girl that has an affair with a married man and only to find that there's no more happiness once the emotions are involved. Yeah, I really enjoyed Bon Jovi's Tristesse, I thought that was really good. Yeah. yeah. I'd but be interested to read more of her. This is really little though, isn't it as well? It's like 112 pages, yeah. but it's really it's lovely. It's a shame she's one of those authors who's just known for one book as well, yeah. isn't it's a shame. So, excited yeah. to read that one. I have got um, They Shoot Horses, Don't They? Um, this is by Horace McCoy. It's all I know about this is that it's kind of about a dance marathon, like uh, one of those kind of. I don't know if they still do them. Probably not. Well, one of those sort of dance. If you, you watch drop, Gilmore kind of, Girls, yes, they talk. There's an episode called "They Shoot Gilmore's, don't oh, they? Yeah. Which is yeah, kind yeah, of why yeah, yeah. I, I've already read this. That's a good one. Yeah, so they do it in Gilmore Girls. Yeah, classic American novel. Um, so I think, I they, I think they need money to do something, and they yeah. enter this marathon dance competition. Uh, yeah, I'm really excited. I I've had this forever. I, yeah, I liked yeah. it. I've got um, Winter Sonata by Dorothy Edwards. Um, so this is on Hona uh, Books, Hona Classics. So it's a Welsh book. Yeah. Um, Dorothy Edwards I'm kind of interested in. This was first published in 1928. And she was the person that kind of... Um, she committed suicide quite young. So she was like 31 or something. So. Oh, yeah. Fun. That should be an uplifting read. <laughs> but it's about um, Arnon, Arnold Nettle, a shy young young telegraph clerk, and he arrives in an English village so as the summer fades. That sounds brilliant. I'm going to read yeah. that. Yeah. So this is, um, again, kind of like 150 pages. It's got an introduction by Claire Fay as well. So that's that one. I have Slow Burn by Jack Ehrlich. Ehrlich. That's a really good it's, nice book, it's isn't tiny it? as well, and it's got green edges. edges. <laughs> I don't know what they're called, yeah. Um, now, Robert Flick is a character in this. I think he's some kind of. He's a parole officer. Okay. Who gets embroiled in this case of arson, I think. I don't know. There's not much information <laughs> on here other than Robert Flick discovers that when a dame's too hot to handle, she'll blaze away at you with a loaded gun. That's even quite a complicated sentence. Isn't I don't it? even know what that means. Yeah, I don't either. Um, so yeah, a parole officer, slow burn. It's gonna be good. <laughs> I've got "Lie with Me" by Philippe Besson, the yeah. one that's translated by Molly Ringwald. Interestingly, lots of these are translated as well. Yes, so, yeah. um, obviously, the uh, Europeans like um, yeah, writing a novella. Yeah. So uh, recently bought this. Yeah. Really excited to read this one. I it's think gonna it's be on like my a, list as well. I think. Um, two men having a bit of a an affair in the summer. Sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm uh, interested in reading Molly Ringwald translation yeah, as well. Amazing. Yeah, amazing. How great is she? Yeah. Um, I've got um, What Belongs to You by Gareth Greenwell, which again, I've had for a while. Um, 
I'm not entirely sure exactly what the story is. I know it's sort of being called a bit of a modern classic. Um, so I think it's, it's it's this teacher who has this kind of ongoing affair with this other man, and it's a charismatic um, young hustler. Yeah, Mitko, a charismatic mm. young hustler, um, and it, his painful rejection of family and friends. Um, it's the, the di difficulty of growing up as a gay man in Southern America in the 1990s. So he's kind of looking back over his life. Yeah, um, it sounds good. Yeah, it sounds great, and I've heard really good things. And yeah. it's um, hundred and. 90 pages. So I've got Suicide Blonde by Darcy Stink. Is her name? Stink. Yeah, I'm not sure. Introduced by Maggie Nelson, um, and it's San Francisco. Um, sexually ambiguous drug taking outsiders desperately trying to sustain a connection with her bisexual boyfriend. Mm. We want that. And um, we've read another of hers, haven't we? Yes, Sister Golden Hair. Is Sister her? Golden Hair. Which is good. And then she's got that new book out about the menopause as well, doesn't she? Which, yes, yeah, yeah, that's where I've seen her name recently. Yeah, so there's been a bit more about her, but this is, it says it's a cult classic, and um, mm. I think it's going to be a good one. I think so too, yeah, I might give that one a go as well. I'm going to read all of your books. Okay. I've got an Ed McBain, because um, every now and again I just like to read a good sort of vintage crime thriller. This is part of his 87 precinct novels, which there are millions of, um, and they're just kind of like crime mystery um, novellas. Um, I mean, obviously, it's got a great cover, mm. of course. This one is from 1964. Um, I think he was writing these up until like sort of 90s, okay. 2000s. So they might, might even still be going, although I don't. I think he's dead, so maybe not going anymore. But yeah, I, I've, I've read a few Ed McBain's, and I think he's decent. I'm looking forward to that one. I've got some Kerouac, Satori in Paris. Is that is it? Yes. Um, it's a Japanese word for sudden illumination or sudden awakening. So does it get into a bit of kind of Buddhism as well or not? I think all of his books kind of refer to Buddhism, don't they? Um, yeah, I think it's, uh, he goes to Paris and then he has yeah. this Satori moment. Okay. Um, from 1966, it says this one, and it looks kind of, um, the quite short chapters. So, and I haven't read this and... Yeah. It's a good one. It's not one of his like classics, but okay. I think it's, everything he writes is fascinating. So okay. I really enjoyed it. I haven't read, you know, masses of of um, Kerouac. I, I mean, I've read um, On the Road, and then I think I've accidentally read The Dharma Bums and The Subterra and uh, twice or something. Mm. So I've weirdly read some of them a few times, yeah. and then <laughs> but because yeah. I keep forgetting which ones I've read. Yeah. But yeah. Well, so. I remember this is because he's in Paris. Um, he at one point he discusses Simonon. Okay. Who was like the big writer at the time. Uh, so I think there's a reference to George Simenon in there. Uh, it's nice. kind of interesting. Hmm. I have, this is a Dutch novel called The Following Story <laughs> by Sis <laughs> Um I'm not sure when this is from. It looks kind of contemporary. It is contemporary. It? Yeah. So I think it's 80s maybe. Okay. Uh, I've had it for a long time. Not Obviously not since the well, 90s, 94. Um, it was first published in Dutch with the title Het Volgenk Verhol. I believe Nailed that's how that. it's pronounced. Yeah. Um, and it's um, just a book about a guy that goes to bed in Amsterdam and then he wakes up 20 years in his past in Portugal in this bed where he's just had this, I think, affair or brief fling with a friend's wife. And I think, I think it's sort of like reviewing that okay. moment in his life. Um, but it's supposed to be really, really good, and I, I think I might even have another book by him somewhere. Oh. I, I haven't read either of them, so good excuse to read that one. Okay, I've got um, this, which is your book, which is Science Proceeds at the End of the World by Yuri Herrera, and this is um, he's a he. I think I it's a he. Yeah, Mexican. He's Mexican. Yeah, yeah it's a he. Um, Mexican, but did his PhD at Berkeley. And um, so translated, and you bought this. You've got a couple by him, haven't you? It's yeah. on and other stories. Yeah, I heard really great things about this one when it came out. And yeah. I just read it. And then I saw on Instagram that Michelle T was loving it. So yes. um, she bought it when she was came on. Yeah, sometimes you just need that little here. push. Yeah. So. And it's been one that I've kind of picked up and put in a pile to read and haven't got yeah. around to it. Yeah. So. Yeah. And um, uh, Valeria Lewis Ellie says it's um, good as well. 
He, she says, Yuri Herrera must be a thousand years old. He must have travelled to hell and heaven and back again. He must have once been a girl, an animal, a rock, a boy and a woman. Nothing else explains the vastness of his understanding. It's That's pretty amazing, amazing isn't know, it? Why haven't we read it? <laughs> uh, my last one is No Angel by uh, Morton Cooper. Um, it's been compared on here to Butterfield 8, which I have read by John O'Hara. Um, I think it's compared to that only in it's a... <laughs> It's the story of a woman who never said no. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was formally published as The Innocent and Willing. Mm, it's a good title. It is a good title. Um, it came out in the mid-50s. Um, I think, basically, she's a little bit corrupt, wanton young lady who uh, probably gets her comeuppance uh, in some kind of tragic way in a really dated, possibly... <laughs> way um, um i think it's gonna be fun i just i love reading a bit of a femme fatale um yeah novel so yeah no angel can't go wrong great cover as well and then i've got sweet days of discipline by fleur jakey and it's translated by tim parks and um it's set in postal switzerland so this one was it last year that there was the um on the book tubathon there was the flipping the coin Oh, challenge yeah. and this was so i had that on my pile it was the one that lost the coin toss so i didn't yeah. read it um but you've read this one haven't you yes do you I, like it i really liked it i thought it was really interesting yeah, yeah. and it yeah it's just they, and they, they i think they've recently been reissuing some of fleur yegi's other books they're all kind of novellas really but they all look really interesting so i think she's kind of maybe a interesting new mm. sort of discovery so from 1989 then is it yeah. yeah so not as far back as they thought no. really but um she sounds fascinating she looks super cool she does look super cool yeah. she looks almost like joan did jenny doesn't she yeah. i don't think you're gonna be able to see that picture because it's really tiny yeah 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 and you've done have you i'm done and I'm then done. my last one is ways of going home by Ale alejandro zambra yeah um and this we've, is we've had braces as well yeah so this is also, I think, blurred by Valeria Lucelli. Yeah. She says that he belongs to that rare species of writer that brings language back to life. And it's growing up in 80s Chile. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I've read another book by him. Have you? Yeah. Um, it got Bonsai, Bonsai, Bonsai yeah. Didn't you? Was that good? Yeah, I really enjoyed it. So, yeah, I think that's going to be really good. I remember um, I, that was given to me by a rep when I was working in the bookshop uh, and she said it was brilliant. So... And originally published in 2011, and then this edition on Grant Granta uh, is 2013. Yeah. It's really nice little book. It's lovely, yeah. It. I'd be good for one of us to read all these books. I and know, then just and they're work. short, so yeah. that's the whole thing, isn't yeah. it? So, yes, a lot of, I'm kind of, yeah, a lot of translated ones in mine, and um, stuff I probably wouldn't pick up to read, but yeah. I think it would be nice. For me, it's just a nice chance to dip into a lot of my yeah. kind of trashy. And then, of course, um, you know, we can... Uh, up our Goodreads, it's good for yes. our Goodreads challenge, which yes. I know this you don't late, have. This late phase in the year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which you don't have, and I've actually nearly no. hit mine, so. Yeah, I'm always back of my mind, kind of aiming for 100 yeah. So Yeah. And where are you now, about 80? Uh, I'm in sort of late 70s. <laughs> late 70s. Yeah. I'm in the mid 90s, guys. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> both, both good places to be, really. So if I read these, I've nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's it. Um, yeah, let us know if you're doing uh, novel novellas in November and novel. what you're reading. Um, once you kind of start looking for them, it's made me kind of yeah. more into it. And I'm excited about my uh, Mary Gate skill coming as well. So. Yes, yeah. And you often do read really chunky novels, yeah. you, so it's kind of a nice break for you. Yes. Yeah. And even if they're awful, it's fine, isn't it? Cause you well, just, exactly. Yeah. Okay, Yay. guys. Thank okay, you. see you soon. Bye. Bye.